The story of whale evolution is a fascinating one, as it captivates the very reason we find evolution so interesting. The idea of terrestrial animals returning to the ocean after nearly 300 million years on land as this was best for their survival. However, the equally as interesting and still not well understood part of this story is what happened next. When modern whales first appeared, how whales evolved baleen in the place of teeth, how some of them developed echolocation and what impact this had on the ocean. The first obligate aquatic whales were basilosaurids that first appeared 45 million years ago and were successful oceanic predators that occupied most of the Earth's ocean at this time. They reigned for many millions of years but were very primitive and didn't possess many features synonymous with modern whales. They had relatively small brains, tiny recessive hind legs, their head was still distinguishable from their body, they lacked the melanorgan that toothed whales used for echolocation, and every member of this group had teeth. However, there was a transition on the horizon from the old to the new, when the seeds were set in place for a takeover from modern whales. The number of Basilosaurus plummeted around 35 million years ago, and would go completely extinct not long after. The details are not very well understood, but it is known that the world was going through many changes at the end of the Eocene and the beginning of the Oligocene. Certain seaways were closing and others were widening. Specifically, Antarctica was moving away from South America, so currents were able to better circulate around Antarctica, cooling the oceans. It seemed the archaic whales, like Basilosaurids, were not well suited for this new world, but newer whales, called Neocetes, were. These new whales evolved from Basilosaurids, and are thought to have come from a smaller family within this group called Dorodontinae. And when the numbers of Basilosaurids were dwindling, the Neocetes split into two groups that define modern whale species to this day. Odontoceti and the Mysticeti. Odontoceti is the group that contains the modern toothed whales like dolphins, beaked whales and also sperm whales, and the Mysticeti is the group that contains all the extremely large baleen whales. These new whales and the geographical changes caused the second cetacean radiation, a second mass diversification of whale species, the first radiation being when they took to the oceans in the first place. At this time the Odontoceti or toothed whales were evolving one of their unique features, echolocation. One of the oldest whales known to develop echolocation was Protolicara that lived 28 million years ago. It was about the size of a bottlenose dolphin and also looked very similar, although this was superficial as they were not closely related. It possessed sinuses very similar to modern toothed whales that allow them to create near constant beams of sound. It also may be what gave them an advantage over basilosaurids in their new environment that was forming. Echolocation allows whales to more effectively hunt in the dark find prey over longer distances, and also opens up an entirely new habitat, deep sea regions, perhaps previously inaccessible to whales. Lanocetus, which was a primitive baleen whale, was a large 8 meter long carnivore that ate other large prey. Despite seeming like a polar opposite to modern baleen whales, it was thought that it used a method of feeding called suction assisted raptorial feeding. This means they sucked in smaller prey into their mouth before eating them. Sperm whales, despite not being baleen whales, use this method of feeding today. The earliest baleen whale known was called Mr. Codon, and lived 36 million years ago. This whale also had teeth, but had a considerably wider mouth and unique skull shape compared to whales that came before. These features have led researchers to believe they fed by sucking up small invertebrates from the ocean floor, similar to how grey whales feed today. This could potentially show how these whales started on their path to filter feeding. Another whale called Myobelania was completely toothless, yet didn't have baleen either. It had strong cheeks, so it most likely fed by sucking in tiny prey that it did not need to chew, probably not too dissimilar to modern whales. So during the late Eocene, baleen whales had many different methods of catching prey, but they would eventually homogenize over one feeding method, filter feeding. It is thought that the toothless whales like Myobelania, or a similar whale, was the transition to eventually developing baleen, meaning that baleen whales went through a period of having no teeth before adapting baleen slightly over 20 million years ago during the Miocene. During the Miocene, marine mammals were at their most diverse, including baleen whales that numbered 20 genera, whereas the species today only belong to 6 genera. However, whales from this time were much smaller. We are used to looking back at prehistoric creatures and seeing much larger animals than their living relatives, but with whales this is in reverse. During the Miocene, baleen whales were rarely larger than 6 meters and virtually never larger than 10 meters, whereas baleen whales today are more commonly larger than 10 meters. Due to the large diversity of smallish baleen whales and marine mammals at this time, the ocean was a perfect habitat for the large super predators to evolve. 
The very well known Megalodon would first appear around this time, but there were also very large toothed whales living around this time. Sperm whales don't really look like any other whales today, and this is because their family, Physeteroidea, have nearly all died out and now only possess two other species. Sperm whales are very distantly related to other toothed whales like dolphins and separated from them as much as 25 million years ago, not long after their evolution. During the Miocene, however, there were many large sperm whale looking animals from this family. They were referred to as the macroraptorial sperm whales, as unlike their modern relation that mainly feeds on large invertebrates. These sperm whales were hyperpredatory and most likely fed on large fish and the many baleen whales living around this time. They somewhat resembled sperm whales, although they had considerably larger teeth, both on their top and bottom jaws, and sometimes had beaks like dolphins. However, on average they were much smaller than sperm whales, as most species were dolphin sized, but one of the members of this family was absolutely monstrous. There is a large graveyard of Miocene whales in the desert in Chile. Among this mass grave, they found a giant 3 meter long skull that possessed the largest teeth ever known. Their owner was a giant whale called Leviathan, there was another macroraptorial sperm whale that has estimated to be around 14 to 17 meters long, meaning it was around the same size as a modern sperm whale, and one of the largest animals that ever lived. When baleen whales started to get gigantic like they are now is still debated, but it does seem the consensus and most modern studies favor a fairly recent date, perhaps as little as 3 to 4 million years ago. And the common ancestor of the two families of the largest baleen whales appeared around this time. Balaenopteridae, which contains humpback whales and blue whales, and Balaenidae that contains bowhead whales and right whales. When and how whales got so large is not very well understood. It has been argued that it may have been in response to the massive sperm whales and megalodon's appearance, as this selective pressure may have favoured larger whales that were too big to eat. However, this theory is unpopular, as the first appearance of these super predators predates the increase in size by a fair few million years. The best theory for why they got so large is to do with the Ice Age, as this caused seasons to become harsher and move away from the consistent warmth of the Miocene. This created more concentrated swarms of krill, giving the whales more food to build a larger body, but also being larger would help them travel longer distances to reach these krill swarms. Their larger size would also make them better suited for travelling in Arctic oceans, which could explain why the small whales that were dying out at the end of the Miocene were usually tropical species. This ended an era of oceanic super predators, as it is highly likely that baleen whales getting larger and smaller species of whale becoming rarer may have been a factor in the demise of the megalodon and the macroraptoral sperm whales. There weren't enough small whales to feed their large mass, and the large baleen whales were far too big for them to hunt. Sperm whales may have been able to survive when their large relatives did not, because they adapted to eating giant invertebrates and hunting in an ecosystem less affected by climate change. So whales are now the largest animals that have ever existed, but in order to obtain this title, another group of giants may have had to die out. A massive thank you goes to Karim and Fozzleworth and my other patrons for supporting me. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to patreon.com forward slash mothlightmedia and make a pledge. If you would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.